Oil sweetening is a common process among operators of natural gas compressors, but there are varying opinions on if it is something you should be doing with your equipment. Let's take a look at some of the benefits and drawbacks. Instead of using a separate compressor oil from a different oil tank, oil sweetening, also referred to as slipstreaming, draws used oil from the engine or compressor crankcase, filters the oil, and feeds it into the compressor force feed system. After the lubricator pumps, the used oil flows through the fluid divider blocks and to the packing and cylinder lube points. Oil sweetening can also refer to the practice of partially draining used natural gas engine oil from the engine sump and then topping off with fresh oil in order to avoid a full drain. For proponents of the process, the benefits of oil sweetening speak for themselves. For starters, there's only one tank to fill because the compressor cylinders are lubricated with oil from the engine or compressor crankcase. Oil sweetening also extends drain intervals because you're taking oil out of the compressor or engine to use in the cylinder lubrication. Through the oil level controller, fresh oil is topped up in the engine or compressor crankcase, which sweetens the oil and potentially allows for extended oil drains. This extended interval between oil changes reduces downtime and saves money. Now that's a pretty sweet deal. But there are some operational drawbacks to oil sweetening. There's a misconception that when slipstreaming, a lower quality oil can be used. However, this practice can lead to bigger, long-term issues within the engine. Quality of the oil matters. A minimum oil performance level must be maintained in order to control deposits and wear. Ultimately, the practice of slipstreaming does not negate the requirements and many benefits to using a good quality oil. Another drawback is that used engine oil has a lot of combustion byproducts, particulates, and wear metals. Contaminants in the oil build up in the sump. These contaminants can then circulate and shorten equipment life. Oil sweetening also conceals engine problems. Increased oil consumption is a telltale sign of trouble. But if you're sweetening, it's easy to attribute the increased oil consumption to the sweetening process and not the true underlying issue. And because the sweetening process dilutes the oil, the amount of wear metals detected in used oil analysis is not a true representation of the actual wear metals generated. All of this could mean equipment failure, costly repairs, and lengthy downtime, which hurt your bottom line. And speaking of your bottom line, some operators believe that oil sweetening saves money due to extended drains and the need to buy only one product. But not all compressors can use engine oils for cylinder lubrication, so the perceived one product benefit isn't always applicable. Before you incorporate oil sweetening in your operation, keep these tips in mind. Use a proper fuel-tested engine oil specific to the engine type. Consider gas constituents such as H2S and CO2 operating discharge pressures, and gas-specific gravity when evaluating oil requirements for the force feed system. Based on gas constituents and operating conditions, an engine oil may not be suitable for cylinder lubrication. Finally filter slipstreamed oil going to the lubricating block correctly, according to OEM specs. Monitor used oil analysis, adhering to OEM condemning limits, and be sure to avoid running the oil continuously close to condemning limits. Set reasonable drain intervals to ensure your equipment is adequately lubricated. Inspect the engine crankcase for any sludge, deposits, or large amounts of wear metals at this time. We recommend using a premium gas engine oil, such as the Centron line of premium gas engine oils for all your oil sweetening needs.